Okay, I am live again. It must be Monday night. Oh, has that camera moved just then? I hope you can... Oh, I'm going to turn this down so you can actually hear me. And you can also see uh, see and hear me. And everything works just fine. No, it looks like the camera's in the right spot. Uh, Whiskey Jusmo, Mount Boy, G Garrup, G Garrup, Our Hands, 45 Finn. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, I have some bottles here, but they're all empty. So I'm not actually having a dram right now. I'm gonna, um, I'll talk, oh, well, don't need to talk about those for now. Um, I want to have a chat with you about Outturn. It is Outturn week, it's Monday, and Outturn is this Friday. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to March Outturn. It's a ripper of an Outturn. It's the first Outturn of the new branch as well. Uh, for those who have been playing along and following along with the journey so far, it is Outturn week for March is this Friday. If you've not bought anything for Outturn before, um, this is a bit of a guide for you. And so we're doing a bit of a back to basics tonight. So for regular members, you already know the drill. However, there's some tips and tricks I wanna share along the way. And I've done one of these streams before. I'm very aware of that. I'm not losing my mind completely yet. Um, however, uh, this is a really good opportunity for me to talk through some of the basics, talk through some of the different things in Outturn, talk through how to approach Outturn, how to make the most of it, which is why I'm holding this permanent marker. Um, Whiskey Saurus, Dram, Whiskey and Wisdom, Hot Dog Extravaganza, Benoit Jasmine, everyone joining, thank you so much, always a pleasure. Now tonight's live stream is at 8 o'clock as normal, tomorrow's live stream has a special guest at 3pm, just so you can mark your calendars nice and early, 24 hours, more than, well less than 24 hours in advance, sorry, but uh, a special guest at 3pm tomorrow uh, for Outturn, and then, um, what else, that's all I've got. Uh, and then no stream tomorrow night. Um, we're both Andrew and I are a bit preoccupied tomorrow night. So um, no stream tomorrow night. Um, but tomorrow afternoon, a very special one. McHenry Distiller joined. McHenry Distiller joined. I think that's you, Sam. Is that you, Sam? Is that you, Sam? Or is that you, Bill? Good to see you either way. Whiskey Boy 71. Whiskey Man Sam. Ah, oh, Whiskey Man Sam joined as well. Double join. Or unless you jumped out and then rejoined. Okay, here it is. Here is March out turn. And here's some of the my favorite tips and tricks on on making the most of Outturn and how to score that bottle you're after. There are some super desirable um, uh, bottlings in this Outturn, um, which I hope you, um, you've probably already noticed, if it's, as it's already in your inbox. I am going to flip through some of this and show you how to make the most of this Outturn. Okay, I'm kind of a little bit off put by my camera angle at the moment, it's a little bit slanted. Anyway, I'll, I'll live, I'll live. Just Dramming joined, good to see Just Dramming. Okay, so I'm talking about some of the tips and tricks about this Friday's Outturn. I don't have any preview stock in the office at the moment. I will later this week, just before Friday. Um, maybe then I'll be able to preview something for you. If not, I'm gonna go through a few things anyway. So at the beginning, we have the Cellar Master's Note, or should start at the very beginning. We have a list of all the bottlings. So you can see all of them in their flavor profile goodness there. And then of course, the, um, the contents page, if you like, followed by the, uh, Seller Master note from Andrew. Uh, and it's always a good read. It's always sort of a, a brief read about his thoughts and musings for the month, which uh, same for me when you flip to the inside back cover there. There's mine with a nice photo of me with Graham and Faye there. So both Andrew and I write something. And then in the Christmas edition, you've probably seen, we often had Andre, Susie, other people writing for Outturn as well, which is great. But that's always the big, the big issue, that one. Jay Hodes, Whiskey Sec, Keegan Emmons, Whiskey Steens, Petrino 11. We're talking Outturn. So, that's the first two pages. Let's go to the next page, Malt of the Month. The thing I like to do with Outturn is, uh, I like to flip through it if I know what I want to get, and I flip through it, and that's why I have the marker. And I'll flip to say page seven, something like fruity, earthy, and exciting, 36.138. That appeals to me, that bottling. I like that distillery, I think distillery 36 is a fantastic distillery. Uh, it's a Diageo powerhouse of a distillery. This one's a 19 year old first fill Moscatel finished hogshead. So this is like a proper big wine cask, 19 year old deep rich in dried fruits, only 249. So what I do is I get, the, I get the, the permanent marker out so I can keep notes of which ones I'm after and I'll circle the one I'm after. I'm gonna move them out of the way. I'll circle the one that I'm specifically after. In that case, as you can see what I'm doing here. I know it's really simple stuff, but, um, you get an idea for, I hope that's, I hope that's uh, focusing all right there. Um, so that's really what I like, where I like to start with Outturn, is going through, reading the tasting notes, 
the distilled date, the ABV, the bottlings, the cask type, the age, the full tasting note is really helpful. And it's always written in here in full. So you've got a full understanding of what is what the, what you're expecting. If you've never tasted it, if it's not at a partner bar near you, then you can really trust those tasting notes. They are, they're completely trustworthy. Uh, if it says something like, uh, strawberry fruit leather, fruity, earthy, exciting, dried cranberries, orange musket, chardonnay, that's really exciting. That for me is that's exciting. That's an exciting note. It sounds like one of those sort of interesting toasty kind of whiskies. So I wanted to, I want to check that out. Uh, and then we always order it by flavor profile. And then in the middle, most issues we have a nice little article each time, something to, something to learn about. A featured cask, fifty nine dot fifty nine, Spock's earwax. Where do they come up with these names? Well, I'll never know. Um, Monster of Malt joined. Jamie Poo's eighty five joined. Calby Chan joined. Malt official joined. What if you want all of them? Calby Chan, that's the story of my life, trust me. Um, yeah, look, I, I normally just pick out one or two that I'm specifically after, and then I work backwards from there, or work forwards from there, whichever way you like. It's some, there's some really lovely whiskies in this month, and I'm, I think it's a really fantastic issue. Spox Ewax, Chocolate Bourbons, they're all in here. The article about to mash or not to mash on Tignier Distillery. Uh, a nice 14-year-old refill sherry whiskey from Distillery 10 in Isla. Uh, a fantastic oily and coastal 93 as well. If you missed out on that 93.99, a few of you have, 93.117 is a fantastic cask, very similar vein. Uh, and then the Peter whiskies are closer to the end. And of course, the Isla icon that Andrew wrote about for this issue is a thigh slapping dram. We don't see 33s very often. I'll read that quote he says in here. Uh, he says, the society has obtained some incredible casks from the distillery over the years. More than our fair share given the distillery's small size and the rarity of its casks amongst independent bottlers. And whilst we don't see a 33 cask on every outturn, they are always worth the wait. I thoroughly agree. This is a refill, sorry, second fill Oloroso, full maturation Oloroso, um, uh, Oloroso, but 12 year old from distillery 33. For those who are fans of 33, uh, this is not one to miss. We've got a very healthy allocation. We've got, we picked up 48 bottles. Uh, it is limit one per member on that, and it's a very attractive price of 375. If you want to do a comparison of what single cask Ardbegs uh, sell for, I, um, I, I challenge you to have a look out for them. Honestly, I saw one today that was $2,000. And I thought, you know what? 2,000 versus 375, you do, the, you do the maths. And then of course, all of our fantastic events on the inside back cover just there. There's a lot of events coming up on the calendar. Um, we've got Hobart and Canberra recently announced. Uh, Wollongong is in just under two weeks. Uh, same for Adelaide on the 13th of March, along with Wollongong 13th of March. Hobart the 21st of March. Sydney the 27th of March has sold out. I'm very sorry, very popular event with Andrew back on, back on board there. Uh, Melbourne Single Cask Sunset Whiskey Cruise. Still a few tickets left for that, not too many though. That's gonna be a lovely afternoon and a very special event on the 1st of May uh, under the Melbourne category there, and the Taste and Test Whiskey Dinner on Canberra. Lots of things going on uh, throughout, and I think that's why it's a really exciting issue for Outturn. Um, uh, Matt Music MW joined, Simon J Davies 7 joined, um, Sable Scotch joined, Montronica joined. Okay, um, thoughts about the cask influence on a cask of that size? Well, I mean, whiskey steens, they're all, I mean, sherry butts are sherry butts. So they're always like, they're quite big. They're often 500 litre casks. So you're gonna get a lot of um, a, a lot of spirit characters still through, which I think is really appealing for a distillery like 33, who have a lovely spirit character. Andrew will be able to tell you more about that as well. Um, the new make at Ardbeg Distillery is, is just a fantastic drink, even on its own. Um, so, that, and, that's, and that's always really exciting to see um, Sherry butts, uh, a sherry cask guard beg coming through. Um, not that I'd know what distillery 33 is, but to see a single cask guard beg coming through is always fun, especially if it's a from a genuine full maturation second fill Oloroso. I think it, it provides, I think the size of that cask after 12 years, a, a sherry butt after 12 years, a second fill is going to have a lovely spirit character and a lovely peat character and a lovely cask influence without overwhelming the spirit, as I've talked about before. Um, however, um, I might know closer to Friday how that actually tastes. I've not tasted the Ardbeg yet. 
the 33. I'm sorry. I don't know what our big is. Uh, the 33. Um, but I, I, if I do get a chance, you'll be the first to know. Uh, Vicky Sim joined. Uh, Simon Davis 7 joined. Um, uh, Multificial. Caden has released an big last week. Okay, cool. Um, what's the difference between refill and second fill? Just more specific. Ah, it's a really good question, Calby Chan. Now, on our labelling, this is one that I could do a whole video on its, on itself. On our, I haven't got an example in front of me at the moment. Um, but on our labelling here, uh, if it says first fill, if the whiskey has first fill written on it, that's really straightforward. That's the first fill of that cask uh, post whatever the previous usage was. So first fill X bourbon is it had bourbon in it before that. First fill X sherry, Oloroso, Pedro Jimenez, um, whatever it is. So that's really obvious. Second fill, when it says second fill, uh, for most distillers, that's obviously the second fill. All distillers, I should say. That's second, the second time it's been used. And if you see refill, that's third That's third fill. Uh, Ewan Campbell, the, the head of whiskey maturation in the UK and our team, doesn't use casks past refill. So he uses them first fill, second fill, refill, we call it. Um, that's, that's in line with industry expectations of... Uh, a second fill, or in if they don't know the fill, they just call it a refill. There are cases where they don't know whether that's the second or third fill. They're getting better at it as an industry, but having you know these little plastic plaques that are stapled into casks um, that have you know all the data in them right now is a relatively modern thing in the industry. But in other times, they may not have known if it was the second fill or refill. If it was a first fill whiskey that somehow miraculously weren't thirty years, uh, which doesn't really happen very often, um, then they might not know if it's a second fill or th you know third fill at that point. A lot of distillers have a much better understanding of data at this point, but we use first, second, and refill, and refill was third, the third fill. And that third fill can often be sometimes the most exciting, in my opinion. You get a lot of great spirit character not being encumbered by cask, um, but the cask obviously lends itself to beating right in the middle of the spirit still, uh, and it's not it's not overwhelming. It's a, it's a lovely way to in, enjoy whiskey. Um, let me grab some of these other questions coming through. J Herds was uh, that wasn't meant to be a or hmm lol. <laughs> Do you ship to Romania? No, we don't. Sorry, it's just I'm just representing the Australian branch of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. I don't think there's a Romanian branch, but um, you'll have to hit up the, our um, our UK hit up the UK about that. Probably best they're even closer than we are. Uh, good info, thank you. Uh, I love Wish you joined. Bob Winting joined. What a crowd tonight! All these people online. We're, talking, we're just talking about outturn. It's just Monday night outturn. Um, I've got, uh, I've got to say though, I think the 53 is great value compared to the 33. I reckon if this is my first outturn, I'll get a couple instead of buying the premium as much as I'd like to. Really good idea, Jay Hodes. That's a really good way to approach it. Pick up a couple of cheapy ones um, and get in the door that way. Start your collection off nicely with a few different flavor profiles. Honestly, if I'm, um, I'm not going to get the 33 myself because I'm being egalitarian and allowing members first access to that. If after the end of Friday there's one left, um, I might might get one, but really it's 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 a big maybe for me. If I was picking two for myself, it's a, if you were asking, um, I'd personally go the 59.59. I wrote the article about it in the middle of the um, in the middle there about the distillery. I think it's a fascinating distillery, and I love that spicy and sweet flavor profile, as a, especially from a new oak heavy like a heavy char new oak hogshead. That can be a lot of fun. Um, if it was me, I'd be yeah. I'd pick out the fifty nine dot fifty nine, and malt of the month. Uh, ooh, but then maybe the thirty six one six eight. Look, it's really hard, and I think it, there's a lot of lovely things to, to enjoy here. But um, things like one dot two one four, Andrew's favorite distillery, the first distillery to join the society, uh, and enshrined history with distillery one and SMWS, which is fantastic. Uh, and that's a really sweet spirit, uh, sweet fruity and mellow. mellow uh, first fill bourbon barrel, and I think that's going to be a, that's going to be a lot of fun. That kind of whiskey, that's kind of whiskey you'd open and share around very uh, very gleefully. So if it was me, I'd get one peated, one unpeated. If I was doing something like that, I'd go maybe ten dot one eight three and one dot two one four. That'd be my picks. Um, yeah, fifty three and more than one. The fifty threes are always absolute no brainers. They're always just like just perfectly constructed single casks, and they've got so much life and so much like. Um, in that case, in fact, that Kippers in Slippers one is is far more briny, like lemon juice and um, like iodine-y kind of 53. It's a bit of a, definitely on the heavier end in the peated spectrum, that one. 
Um, some of the 53s we get are on the lighter peated spectrum. Some of them we get are super heavily peated. But um, that one falls right in the middle. And it's, a, it's such a balanced 10-year-old whiskey, that one. And more of the month is just, it's, that's going to be good fun. That's just good fun there, right there. So those are my sort of hot tips on how to make the most of Outturn and what the casks I pick, however. Um, so my, my other tips are, I'm going to go through them just quickly now, is circle... Uh, circle the ones you want. And that's where I started. I said, you know, you'd circle the ones you're kind of after so you get, you don't forget which ones you're sort of scout, scouting out, reading your tasting notes on. That's the first thing. The second thing is uh, ensure you've got a good internet connection on the day. Don't rely on your Wi-Fi if it's particularly problematic. You know, use your 4G or something on your, uh, or um, or something else or do it at work where you have a better connection or something like that. The second, third thing is, sorry, is um, make sure you're logged in. Now, this is a common mistake I see. Members who are trying to buy something and it won't let them buy it, it won't let them check out, or they can't add it to cart. And how come I can't add this to my cart? And there's a frantic rush on a Friday afternoon. The reason is you're probably not logged in. There's a, that happens, and you, sometimes you think you're logged in, you've got your computer browser automatically logging you in, uh, which is what I do. But sometimes you just go, oh, it's not, it's not, um, it's not logged in. Sometimes it just logs you out for whatever reason. So, and that's not just our site. That's just you know a website. Sometimes you have to relog into your Gmail. You have to relog into Facebook. You have to relog into the society website. So it happens. Make sure you're logged in. That's the third tip. The fourth tip was, did you know we use filtering options uh, on the website? So let's say the bottling you're after is exactly $599, that one, like a super premium. You know there's only 12 in the country. Soothing the mind, G6.8, or an incredible whiskey, by the way. Um, pretend for a second that that is... Uh, yeah, pretend for a second that's the only bottle you're after. Then set the price parameters on the website to only show bottles that are between $598 and $600. And suddenly when you refresh at midday, after midday, that's going to be the only bottle that you see on the shop page because that's the one you've filtered the pricing to. That's a, that's an old, that's a really scarce little tip, that one. And the last tip I'll give you before getting into some of these other questions is um, buy now and browse later. Now, what I mean by that is Let's say there's a bottling coming up that you kind of have an idea there's going to be a lot of members going for a, sh a small allocation. Hint, hint, hint. So if there's something like a 33.138 and you know it's going to be popular, check out on that one first. Just get that one in your cart and checked out. By the way, the bottling is not yours until you've checked out. In your cart does not guarantee the sale. So put that in your cart, go through the checkout. You'll pay the $15 freight, uh, but then come back anything else you wanted after that if there was a bottle of say the 77.58 or something like that that you wanted wakey wakey or uh, g6.8 if you're feeling quite adventurous and then check out with that one we can look after the process of refunding that one of those uh, postage amounts it's not a big deal it's something we can offer up for you or add it back into site credit however you want it and that'll be that's e that's make sure you won't lose out on anything then it's a, it's a big, it's a small little thing, but it just ensures that you'll get what you're after there. Let me grab some of these comments and questions coming in. Um, uh, Calvin Chen says, thanks for clarification, you're welcome. I love Wushu says, hey mate, love the juice from SMWS. Possible order Australian bottles for the Philippines. Uh, no, I love Wushu, I'm, I'm afraid not. We only ship to Australian dresses and Australian residents and Australian members. You have to be a member living in Australia to order bottles off us, I'm sorry. There's, uh, there are other branches internationally. There's branches across Asia, across America, across the UK and Europe. Um, but we don't ship to the Philippines. I'm sorry. Um, the 10 looks the goods. It does look the goods, Whiskey Juzmo. I'm really excited by that. I've not tried it yet. But the idea that it's a little bit older than some of the 10s we've seen lately, it's a 14-year-old instead of a 10 or 11 or 12-year-old, um, is really exciting. And Oil and Coastal is one of my favorite profiles. So something like a, a refill Oloroso, a refill Sherry Butt on that is going to be I think quite exciting and quite juicy and lovely. So we'll see how that goes. I've not tried it yet, but the tasting notes look look appealing. Uh, more than a month sounds fantastic. It is fantastic, Calvi Chan. It's also incredible value. I know I'm probably biased in saying that working for the society, but I honestly think it is incredible value. A age-stated single cask, cask strength from Distillery 1 for 149 is absurdly good value, in my opinion. Um, how different is Malt of the Month compared to Kept in the Dark back in December afternoon? Sally, very good question. Of course, they're both single casks, so they are going to be quite different from each other in many respects. However, I'd say that this one is... The Kept in the Dark was a fascinating whiskey. One of my favorites of last year, and I'm still kicking myself for missing out on that one, I'll be honest. That was in the Juicy Oak and Vanilla profile. 
I think it was also a, it was a seven year old, a little bit younger. Um, but that drinking, like kept in the dark, tasted like you were drinking straight from a, a, a forgotten cask in a Dunnage warehouse. It drank well beyond its years. It tasted far more mature than the age state uh, would have you believe. Uh, it, ha- it had all these like lovely dusty sweet notes in it, which was just like it did. Does it even a tasting note in it? That said something about like shining a light through a Dunnage warehouse window, like an old dusty window on an old cask. It's like that smell of that sort of dusty Dunnage, sweet Dunnage warehouse was just and like damp, sweet, wet floor kind of thing. I don't know how to describe that, but it was unbelievable. I've not tried this 1.214 yet. I am going to soon. Uh, but I would imagine this one, as per the tasting notes, are quite a, it's quite a bit more sort of confectionery, quite a bit more sort of fruit and confection rather than dusty dunnage. So that would be my tip, Sally. It would be of a similar vein because the spirit character from that distillery, especially in a first fill bourbon barrel, is going to be quite sweet, quite vanilla slice, quite sort of tropical fruits. Um, whereas uh, this is, I think this is going to be a little bit different, but of course it's um, always unique, the flavor profile of each. It would be good to do a side-by-side of those two, actually. Um, Jay Hurd says, I already got uh, Marriage of Candy and Sandy from last month coming. Oh, awesome. I was going to wait, but I looked and there's only one left, so I grabbed it. Good idea. It's... By the way, speaking of just good ideas, the other outturn tip I'll give you is that not everything happens on Friday. I've got some gunk on my hand. Not everything happens on Friday right at midday. Uh, the, I mean, the main outturn goes on Friday at midday. I will concede that. That's true. Uh, first Friday of every month, except Christmas, where it's mid-November. Um, so what happens then is that, sorry, what I'm trying to say is, let me lose my, get my train of thought here. When I say what I mean by not everything happens on the first Friday is that periodically throughout each month, we occasionally pop things up on the website. It might be something we featured in an event and it went well at the event and we've only got five left. It's not a bottle to put on an outturn. We sometimes just pop it back on the website and you'll suddenly see something that maybe was, wasn't there yesterday. Or was there yesterday, was out of stock yesterday, is back in stock today. So stock levels change a little bit on the site sometimes, depending on where they're allocated. It's quite a process, but um, it means that we members might not be able to, might not miss out on something that they thought they did. Uh, I have 24.130, lovely dream. All the 24s are lovely. Uh, Vic, uh, Vicky Sim. Um, mm, Mr. Coconut joined, Back Jerry joined. Mount Slide Distilling joined. Back Jerry, I haven't seen you in a while, mate. Hey, I hope you're well. Traveling Whiskey Reviews joined. Uh, cool, 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 cool. Scott McGinnis joined. You convinced me. A side by side it is then. <laughs> yeah, me too. I think, I mean, I, I'm kind of, like I said, I'm a little bit bummed I missed out on them kept in the dark because I think that was one of my highlights of the Christmas outturn. Uh, it was just, it was such a crazy whiskey. It was like 64 point something percent. It was a massive uh, proof on it. It had so much character for, for a young whiskey. It was only seven years old, um, but like I said, there was a sweetness to it and the, like a dusty dunnage note to it, which was just fascinating. And the oiliness on that particular cask had a viscosity to it that was the mouthfeel was unbelievable on it. So I'm kind of still a little bit like, ah, I should have picked one of those up. That's all right, doesn't matter. Win some, lose some. That's what it's always about. There's always lots of great whiskey, but if you see something in an outturn you're after, check out first, shop later. Uh, no distractions, check your internet, filter your options get your marker out and read those tasting notes. They're always so accurate. The panel go to such great lengths to make sure that everything we release is panel approved. You can always trust what's in and out turn. And we uh, we try and, and we obviously pass on the best possible pricing to members based on each cask. And I think it's really exciting that we've got a such a ripper, colorful, autumnal out turn. Now, a couple of last little announcements just before I um, wrap it up for the night. Special live stream tomorrow is at 3 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon, not at 8 p.m. So I'm doing a bit of an early afternoon one with a special guest. I'll, that'll be more on that tomorrow. Um, I'll just check our stories. It'll be up on there and check, and, and I'll put it up on YouTube, of course, as well, if you're watching on YouTube. Um, then there's uh, lots of events coming up. I was gonna, I've already mentioned the events, all on the inside back page of OutTurner, whether you read it online or in paper form. Um, lots of events coming up. Love to see you at some of them. Uh, and, um, there was one, I'm sure one other announcement I had to make. That's okay. I can't remember for now. Uh, if I do, I'll put it up as a story instead. Have a great night, everyone. And I'll see you all tomorrow afternoon. Um, what am I bringing? Oh, last question. What do I bring to the Tassie event? Sally, I'm still working that out. I've still got a couple, three weeks up my sleeve to work that out. Uh, but it's going to be a very special lineup. And of course, for all those, especially the Tassie event, I like to pull, pull some wild cards out of the bag for that. That's going to be great. 
see you all tomorrow.